Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Today we are doing a Dobby X listener. This is part one out of three by Hungry Writer and Wattpad. I'm so sorry for not posting for two days. School's been tough and my mental health has been decreasing, so I'm just trying. I'm pushing myself to do this. Um, I'm going to try posting all three parts today to make up for all the time that I haven't been posting. So, yeah. The fan fiction and art are going to be linked in the description along with my Discord and Instagram. Also, I'm sorry if the audio quality is bad. I need better headphones, and my headphones don't work apparently. So, yeah. And there's also no music because I want you guys to actually hear me, and it's just too much work. I've also reached the point where I don't care if anyone walks in on me recording. So, yeah. Um, your quirk for this is you have the ability to remember anything that you read, but you get headaches often. Let's begin. The humid summer air made everything seem foggy and slow, but despite the uncomfortable weather, you still needed to go to work. You threw on your work clothes and grabbed your retractable baton, placing it on your jacket pocket. Your quirk didn't give you any physical advantage, so you had taken matters into your own hands by getting some concealed weapons. With that taken care of, you headed out to work. You worked for a hero law firm as one of the, their best parale paralegals. Your memorization quirk was perfect for the, remembering old and new hero laws. Every day, you tried to read a new book just so you could store more information in your head, even if the headaches got worse and worse every time. The firm was a little ways away, so you had invested some of your money into getting a gently used black Kawasaki Ninja motorcycle. It was super fast, and you loved the thrill of speeding along the twisting roads. Safety first, Wyan, you thought, to, you thought as you put on your black helmet and matching black and white biker gloves. You hopped onto the large bike easily and peeled out of the driveway. The sunlight pierced your eyes as you drove speeding along the winding streets of the city. Your helmet didn't cover your face, much to your annoyance. You slowed down, anticipating the upcoming red light. The motorcycle engine purred and you clicked your tongue impatiently. You hated waiting with a passion, as at least there was no traffic. In fact, you were the only one waiting at the intersection. Suddenly, you heard a loud scream coming from the alleyway to the right of you. Your heartbeat quickened, worried about what you might see if you went over there. No, I need to be helpful. Maybe someone just fell over or something. It's not always a villain attack. You turned your bike the right to the right, driving up the sidewalk slowly. You got off and parked it, calling out to see if they were all right. You listened intently, but you were met with silence. You walked, you quietly walked into the bleak alleyway. You could feel sweat beads starting to form on your forehead. Is everything okay over there? You asked, looking up to see where, whatever there was to see. But no one was in the alley. The alley was empty except for a few trash cans and what looked like dust. You walked over to the dust pile and squatted down curiously. It wasn't dust. No, it was too dark and dense. It's don't move or you'll end up just like that worthless guy on the ground. A deep and sinister voice told you from behind. You felt a warm palm touch the small of your back, and your breath hitched. Damn it, I guess it is always a villain. Sweat rolled down the sides of your face, and you gulped. P please. I I I'm not a pro hero or anything. Then what are you exactly? You must have heard the guy scream and thought that you could help, huh? I... Yeah, I did. You admitted with a shaky voice. There was a long silence. The palm on your back was now getting uncomfortably hot, and you seriously wondered if you were going to make it out of this in one piece. You felt the weight of your baton in your pocket and wondered if you could take him in a head-on head, head fight. But before you did anything rash, 
you riffle through your limitless memory, trying to at least figure out if you read about this villain before. Ash, that pile is definitely ash. Fire quirk? Male, sounds young. Is he a new villain? Who the hell do you think you are? You think you got the right to hand out justice? He asked you in a low voice. It's not my right. I just wanted to help Dobby. Oh, so you heard of me, he asked you, his voice sounding less bored now. You were still terrified, but you held your ground as best as you could, trying not to let fear seep into your voice. Of course, you were in the newspaper a few weeks ago. You're part of the League of Villains, you stated from memory. The the article wasn't that long. It didn't even have a picture of him, and the crimes that he had done, that he had committed, were mostly just petties. So why did he just kill that guy? What's his plan? But if you're going to kill me, can I at least um call my parents first or something? Shh, don't be dramatic. I'm not going to kill you," he said, his voice getting quiet. And you felt the hot palm leave your back. Oh my God. Don't mind my cat. Hmm. Hmm. I guess this is my chance. With blinding speed, you whipped out your baton and felt it click into place while simultaneously turning around to face Dobby. With one swift and powerful motion, you swung the baton at his knees. It connected with a loud snap, and you smirked. His lidded blue eyes widened, and he looked extremely annoyed as he fell down on the ground with a resounding thump. He definitely looked different from what you had imagined. Patches of purple skin clung to his face and adorned his face. Clung to his body and adorned his face, attached with shiny silver stitches. His jet black hair mostly covered his striking blue eyes, but you could tell that he was pissed that you had attacked him. Despite your, su despite your surprise at his appearance, you took this precious opportunity to aim a swift kick at his face. He got up quickly in a squatting position and grabbed your leg before you could connect it with his face. He yanked on your leg roughly, pulling you down to the hard concrete ground. Ack! You swung your bat baton reflectively at his face, but he moved back, making you just raise his nose slightly. As he moved back, he extended his arm, his palm facing towards you as you could see dark blue flames burst out of his hand and you instinctively jumped back. The flames luckily never reached you, but they made an effective smoke screen. Dobby, get back here, you scream, coughing as you inhale the thick smoke. You twirled your baton in your hand and ran quickly out the alleyway, but he was gone. Talking to the police didn't take as long as you thought it would, but at the end of the day, you were completely exhausted. Using your quirk all day definitely took its toll. Oh, and getting attacked by that strangely attractive villain took its toll on you too. Finally, you are back at your motorcycle, eager to head home. You zipped around the streets as, you qu as quickly as you could and got to your house in record time. You parked your motorcycle in the tiny carport and locked it up. As you locked it, you couldn't shake the creepy sensation of so that someone was watching you from behind. Admittedly, you were still shaking from the incident with Dobby, so you pulled out your baton as quickly as you could. You turned around and, sure enough... Dobby was standing right in your tiny carport, his hand stuffed into his pockets casually like he had done this a thousand times. Get the hell away from me, you yelled at him, getting into a fighting stance immediately. But to your surprise, Dobby took his hands out of his pockets and raised them above his head as if he was surrendering to you. Your eyes widened, but you still kept your baton out just in case. I don't want to fight. I want to make a deal with you. Huh? That's the end of part one out of three. Um, part two will be posted a bit later today.
I hope you all enjoyed this. And I'll see you all next time. Bye!